All right, so far the only thing on the agenda is about benchmarking cell drivers. This came up in Mark's performance call last week. So um, essentially the idea is to use CBT in order to do comparisons between different zipper backends. Which I think so, is really interesting, uh, though I'm not sure. Um, potentially, DB store we could run, but I'm not sure if any of the other backends are in a state that that could actually pass these workloads. Dan, do you have a sense? Um, I don't. The the um... The motor might be that far along, but they're targeting, they're not targeting Maine, they're targeting Pacific. Um, so. Quincy, rather. Or Quincy, sorry, Quincy, not Pacific. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that all of that has been merged upstream yet. Um, and I don't know how to run motor anyway, and I don't know if you need special hardware for it even. Yeah, I was going to say, are, is that motor and aren't motor and Deos proprietary? So motor has an upstream on GitHub. Oh, as far as I know, it's open source, but I don't know if it runs by itself or if it needs the Seagate hardware. I don't know about Deos. I haven't seen an upstream for that yet. I think Deos itself is all open source, though, right? It could be. I don't know. I just haven't. I have actually seen the motor upstream. I have not seen the Deos upstream. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As, as far as I'm aware, I think it's it's all open source. I, I, there may be some proprietary bits in there. I don't know. But um, but it was um, we we actually uh, lost a, a a grant to them back in the very very early ink tank days. It was like forty million dollars, I think. That was through Lawrence Livermore and a couple other places. And I thought that that was the the whole purpose of it was to fund like an open source next generation luster replacement so hopefully hopefully it still all is but i guess i don't know so on the cpt side of this um even if if uh on the rtw side it's not ready yet what i was kind of thinking is um uh, for for ages, I've, I've wanted to basically finish the abstraction of CBT clusters um, uh, not being just Ceph. Um, I kind of started in that direction and never really finished it because cluster sort of, that was the first thing I was going to target, and it, it it's kind of now uh, just on life support. But um, just being able to stand up Deos would maybe be the first step. And then from there, uh, building out the the kind of um, uh, client endpoints in CBT to be able to do different things with it. Um, and even if RGW isn't ready, we could start out with like IO500 because I wanted to get that integrated into CBT too. Um, but RGW could be another piece of that, letting it target a Deos cluster instead of a Ceph cluster. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess it depends kind of on the workload you're running. Sort of basic workloads should work, as far as I know. Um, but um, there are definitely things that are not yet implemented. Sure, sure. Um, like basic get puts, deletes bucket listing. Those should all work, but for example, I'm not conv I'm not positive they've implemented multi-part yet. Okay. Um, and you know, certainly, like any admin stuff, you will have to do outside of RGW. Okay. Creating users, changing ownership, any kind of things like that. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. That would be part of the the cluster class that we'd create for it. I think right now that's all handled internally by the, the Ceph cluster class in CBT, if I remember right. I, I try to abstract that away. If it's not, we can we can fix it. But right. yeah, like, the goal would be to make it so that, um, that 
Well, uh, yeah, that's a little tricky, I guess. But in any event, I'm sure we could we could figure out a way to to make that all kind of reasonable at the very least. Yep. Um, but I think we're fairly close to being having good coverage for a lot of this stuff. Um, cool. I mean, the, the stuff that's mostly missing is is stuff related to like extended clusters, you know, zones and zone groups and multi-site and um, life cycle and you know things unrelated to actually reading and writing and storing data so sure sure yeah and i don't i don't remember if deus actually requires optane or not it might um we do have optane nodes though there are nodes that have optanes in them they're not the the dims just the the uh you know standard block devices but maybe that's good enough. I don't know. It appears uh, that Lenovo, at the very least, has uh, Deo stuff on the IO500. I don't know if IBM works with them at all or if that's just completely separate now. Um, but I thought that was kind of interesting. They're actually reasonably high up. Uh, let's see, this thing is Lenovo. Apparently running SUSE. Yeah, Deos is fast. I mean, everything I've seen about it makes it look really, really fast. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen any benchmarks of how they do once they turn replication on, which they apparently do have now, uh, but um, in an unreplicated mode, it, uh, it appears to be uh, uh, really, really quick. I suspect that in its uh, if you run it in in one of the modes where it runs really fast, it'd probably be significantly faster than Ceph backends are. Could be, yeah. But that's okay. The whole point of this is to learn from it, so I think uh, it's absolutely worth doing. So how how who's who's testing this right now? Like who's who's working on it and actually getting it working? The Deo stuff, the Seagate yeah. guys are. They are okay. Okay. Yeah. I Wait. don't. None of them are in the call today, but they frequently show up to these calls when they have stuff to discuss. You you mean the Intel guys, not the Seagate? Intel guys. Intel guys. Deos is Intel. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. Deos is okay. Intel. Yeah. Intel guys. Then. Interesting. Motor is Seagate. Yeah, a new motor was Seagate. Yeah, and there's something else that's Suze, but I forget what the name of that is. Or they're doing something else. They're, yeah, they're doing a DB store alike. Yeah, that's what it is. OK. Are, was that part of the Rancher Labs thing? They had some kind of storage thing that they got through that. I don't remember what it was. This is a new thing, as far as I can yeah. tell. I, oh, I, interesting. I, I think they're just trying to maybe productize S3 on a yeah. database. I think oh. they want they want they want a standalone single node S3. Yeah, it's it's not a bad idea. I figure that's why you guys are doing primarily why you guys are doing Zipper too, right? I, I mean, that's that's the idea behind DB Store. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. You imagine there's a ton of people out there that would be plenty happy with replication inside one node and just standing it up and having it be simple and, and just work. Yep. That's the goal. Makes sense. Integrated into your IDE, 
for development purposes. <laughs> oh wow! Are you are you looking at that? Is that like actually a use case that you guys are? I mean, it's it's a potential use case, right? Yeah. It, it, the idea is to scale down edge as far as possible. That's cool. You know, not quite into your car, but maybe close. Yeah. Into your car. be shocked at what's in our cars, so I don't think putting these in our cars is out of the question. Well, not out of the question, but I think the 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 compute platforms in current vehicles are a bit lacking in that respect, even in a Tesla. Tesla's apparently run a custom version of Ubuntu, I found out. Who does? Oh, uh, Tesla? Yeah. Interesting. Huh. So looking back in the agenda, it, it uh, turns out that the Deus backend was contributed by Seagate. That's what I thought. It was the same guys. Wait, really? Yeah, it's the same guys who did the motor did the Deos. Huh. That's really interesting. I wonder what Seagate's involvement in Deos is these days. I, th I know Intel at one point seemed like they were really, really targeting their own, um, you know, Optane high-performance storage. But now that that's kind of on the way out, who knows? So yeah, I, th I think we should collaborate with Seagate on um, CBT stuff for both their motor backend and the Deos one. Sure. Have we ever have, have any of you guys tried actually like setting any either of those up? I build against it, but I don't. I haven't actually run them. Okay. So I, I know I installed the correct uh, RPMs and stuff to build it, but I haven't actually run it. So. Sure. Sure. Well, maybe I'll give it a shot. Just see if I can get something stood up. Um, is Motor open source or is that proprietary? That's open source too, yeah. We haven't seen those folks in a while. Are they like in the middle of a sprint and just stopped needing us? The Seagate folks, that is. I think they're approaching a release would be my guess. Oh. Um. I occasionally get either accidentally or on purpose tagged on their PRs for their up for their upstream stuff. And there's definitely a lot of stuff going on. So is uh is this the thing we're talking about? Yes, that looks right. Okay. Interesting, heavily influenced by Luster. Hmm. Do you guys know very much about how it differs from stuff? Like what the main kind of Selling points of this are? I can tell you it's not a fork of stuff, or else the people that are in the other core meetings would have been bombarded with questions about stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you, yeah. Would, you would know if it was a fork of stuff. We could, trust me. No, no, I know. I'm, yeah, I wasn't even trying to imply it was a fork of stuff. I'm just trying to figure out like um, what the design differences are. Right, especially if both are um, have some kind of luster heritage. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, I mean, I haven't kept up on luster, but luster is very kind of primitive compared to what stuff or Deus or maybe what this thing does. So I'm curious, kind of, what influence they took from luster, other than the fact that yeah, you know, it's 
distributed. <laughs> It's possible Luster is way, is you know more more impressive now than it I, I remember. It's been a long time since I looked at it. Okay, so they can make the claim here that traditional file system properties are no longer desirable or achievable at mass capacity. So it, I, I guess their file system interface isn't really POSIX compliant. It, it kind of, they don't really get into details there though. Yeah, they have a architecture doc kind of thing linked in the, from the front page. Oh, more about it. yeah, you're right. OK. It sounds like it's. sort of more distributed than Ceph? Like they distribute their MDS type stuff? Yeah, I see that kind of like distributed cache concept that they talk about here. For read-only cache. And then, yeah, if, if you make a, an operation request, you make it to the local node, and then that decides what to do. So in that respect, it's kind of like cluster. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of text here. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to hijack your guys' meeting with like a, a discussion of some other random distributed storage storage system. But oh, there's nothing else on the agenda. So, um, I had a quick question for Casey. What's up? Uh, regarding perf counters, cache stuff. So, I was going back through the meeting we had a few weeks ago and thinking about it, and. Would one way to like have the dumb approach be to have a separate perf counters collection for the labeled perf counters instances, or if I like change the data structure at all metrics that's attached to the sep to a sub context, the same way the current perf counters collection is? Um, right. I think that could be a way to do it. Where the existing perf counters collection is just kind of the static version. Mm -hmm. um, if we want to do something more complicated with caching and LRU, then um, it might be a different class that kind of satisfies a similar interface for for dumping to the admin socket. Mm -hmm. I think the critical piece there is just how we handle locking and concurrent updates while the dump stuff is is happening okay because I, I think i'm leaning towards just keeping the current infrastructure of perf counters instance of perf counters collection i'm taking a look at the prometheus cpp library to understand how they store their labeled counters in memory and see how 
the exporters processing them and if there should be some views and work there and if it would be worth it or not um but no i was just wondering what your take was on the on the on the dumb side of things yeah i think you should be able to keep the perf counters collection part the same cool uh that's it for me So, Mark, what do you think the next step should be here? Is this something that you want to take on, or should we connect you with the relevant folks from Seagate? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to talk to them. I'm I'm thinking my next step is probably to figure out how to actually install this stuff and make it run. Um, that's you know maybe the the way I did with IO five hundred was basically just you know start taking notes and and try to form a procedure for how to deploy things and and do things. The same thing with Luster. Um, then from there, we can try to figure out how to actually, you know, automate it in some fashion. Um, does that does that seem reasonable to you? I don't think you guys there's any real requirement on you guys to do much um, other than keep keep you know making it work on your side. Yeah, great. Um, ben, do you have do you know any like official contacts for this stuff, or should we just um, pick people that opened PRs for these? I mean, I have people who have emailed me in the past, but that's about it. Um, I think probably Gregory is the would be the official contact. Gregory Turetsky. Yeah, that sounds right. I think he's the sort of leader of the team. Or at least he's always taking point in communications. All right, good. Could you share his email with Mark then? Sure. Cool. Yeah, and I'll just dig around in here and see if I can find any um, kind of docs on on how they they typically try to install this stuff. Um, like like with Seth, I may actually dig underneath their their installers and see if there's a a more low level way to do it yeah so um i mean we we have db store working well we haven't really tried any performance stuff because we don't exactly expect sqlite to give great performance especially yeah. in the parallelism um but that might potentially be an interesting target as um like a cluster abstraction since it's deployed a little differently and yeah. it should be pretty easy too sure sure right now in cbt we kind of have this concept of um endpoints where i'm trying to remove the direct connection between benchmarks and different clusters and kind of have this like almost abstraction layer between them that says what that particular um kind of cluster can support for uh, for uh, you know accessing or accesses so like as an example this is the the real simple right now uh, endpoint for RGW s3 um, so it might be kind of fleshing this out and figuring out exactly what the abstraction looks like uh, as we move forward but right now this is kind of the the piece that ties, uh, the Ceph cluster class to to the uh, well, the only one that I really have going right now is the uh, the hot sauce benchmark. But theoretically, we actually have still might be able to run Cosbench and um, get put, which was a thing that Mark Seeger wrote like now five or six years ago. Yeah, but we could we could also look at like mini out warp. What was it? I like hot sauce better than Casbunch. <laughs> right? It's it's a lot lot less code. <laughs> but, but seriously, we could get Minya or maybe in there too if they can. I don't know if you can automate it easily, but if you can, that you know that'd be another thing that we could integrate in. 
So Cal Pesha has been working with Minio Warp recently. So you might want to ping him and see sure. if he has any interesting information on it. Yeah, and, and really the more the better, right? The 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 if you can get agreeing results through different tools, that's that's kind of the 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 best case scenario. Uh, sorry, who did you say it was? Uh, Cal Pesh. Okay, I don't know. I that will individual. give you give you his email as well. Sure. And so, like, I'm not. This is um, my thought on this is that it's not like a super time critical thing. You know, there's lots of other stuff that will probably interleave. So I'm I'm hoping that we can make forward progress on it, but I don't know that it will necessarily be like, you know high priority to finish this this fall or something. But, you know, that may be if, if you know, it's, it's kind of being worked on by the background by you guys, if, if we start it now, hopefully by the time it's interesting on your side, we'll, we'll have something. Yeah, that's great. I mean, um, this whole thing is kind of a, a very long-term project and a lot of things like how we test and benchmark other backends in the Ceph kind of ecosystem is is still being decided, but yeah, I think this would be a a great help. Sure, sure, and and for me, my goal with this is is not just RGW two. It's you know if we can actually run Deos or run Motor or whatever else, and if they got like a block compatibility layer, my my hope is that we can actually use that and directly compare Ceph with RBD versus one of these other things. You know, are we behind? Are we significantly behind? We want to know. Yep. Yeah, having one environment where we can run multiple RGW backends would be very, very useful. Yeah, yeah. Because right now, they don't run Ceph, and we don't run Motor or Deos. And so, you know, there's no real way to compare anything. Yep, so, yep. And and even like IO five hundred, that's kind of the goal with it. But every everyone runs it so differently, like you know, different numbers of clients and and different setups and all of these other things that different hardware. It's, exactly, it's you know, like they got the ten node challenge. But what does ten nodes mean, right? Like when you're on fast devices, you know, are these ten nodes full of Optane dims or are they ten right. nodes full of you know, QLC flash? So yeah, it'd be neat. Um, there'll be some work, for sure, but there's a lot that we could do there. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Cool. And next time that they do show up to the refactoring call, I'll be sure to re-raise it. Cool. Cool. Yeah, hey, I, um, I had a, a slightly different question, um, Adam. I'm did, did you see the email I sent out this morning with the, the librbd stuff? Cool, cool. Um, would you mind if I I'm thinking about writing basically that whole thing up as a blog article and just wanted to mention your work on on ASIO? Would you mind if I if I kind of uh, just mentioned your name and what you were doing on it? Oh, not at all. I'm that I, and uh, your mail actually gives me hope that we will get better RGW performance too uh, once we get ASCO into it. Yeah, it, you know, I, I didn't ever really look too closely at uh, client performance changes after you merged that, but it's, I don't think we've ever before gotten like 130,000 IOPS through uh, just a single libRBD instance like that. Um, you know, it's, it's looking like it's a pretty impressive uh, improvement with that code, so uh, kudos. This is related to Neo Rado stuff. Yeah, um, I don't know if I put you on the the email, Casey. I just included Adam and, and Matt, but I can add you to. Um, basically, IBM Acadia they were seeing really really poor QMU KVM performance, and they were getting nervous. Uh, so earlier this week, I went through and actually wrote up instructions for like tying in libRBD and you know, 
looking at different performance aspects of it and we can we can do like 123,000 read IAPs through one QMU KVM instance, which is not bad. That's awesome. Uh, using librd 1.12, which I don't remember what version that is. Is that Nautilus? Something like that. Um, the max you're hitting was about 83. So uh, close to a 50% gain, I guess, right around there. Nice. I think uh, I think there's some more potential for deeper integration with ASIO, like all the way down to the, the messenger. But I think yeah. that would be a lot more complicated. Yeah, I saw some of the discussion that was happening on the, the original PR uh, that, that uh, Jason had made for utilizing SEO, and I, I saw some of that. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, I don't I don't look at client performance very much, unfortunately. I wish I did more because this is this is big. Like it it you know it looks like it's been good for for a while now, like almost two years. But uh, but you know, oh well. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm glad that RBD has made use of it. Uh, RGW still hasn't been able to convert. That's something on the still on the horizon. Yeah, it, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I don't remember exactly all the bottlenecks in the RGW, but it definitely looked like it made a really big impact on RBD. So, it's it it, it definitely looks like there's potential there at the very least. Yeah, hopefully uh, once we get out from under this multi-site resharding stuff, we'll be able to tackle that. Is that still plaguing you guys? Multi-site resharding? Yeah. Uh, getting it to work is still... Yeah. It's complicated, for sure. Well, uh, yeah, let me know how it's going with, uh, if, if you guys can move on to the SEO because it certainly looks interesting. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got enough backend OSD throughput at this point that, um, you know, on a, a cluster of like the, the size that we tested here was just, I think five nodes and 30 OSDs on NVMe. It's fast enough that, that we can actually, um, you know, make use of of, uh, of these MVME drives at this point. They're they're getting work fairly hard. So uh, yeah, client side is is definitely is interesting right now in terms of what we can do to uh, to uh, really you know make use of all that backend throughput that we've got. Latency is probably where we're still falling down a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else for the agenda? Don't want to keep folks too long. Thanks for coming, Mark. Your insights are always yeah. really helpful. Well, thanks for having me, Casey. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.